Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today I'm looking at a channel called Three Angels Massages. I, I mean messages, different three angels there. Anyway, in this video they try to tell us that not only were Australopithecine and humans alive at the same time, but Australopithecus afarensis was not bipedal. So let's take a look. This is Johansson. He's the one who found the famous Lucy. And he says, well, she is the prime candidate. Lucy was tiny, and there are scientists today in the literature which say Lucy was nothing other than a pygmy chimp. Oh, I always love it when creationists get super specific in citing their sources. Which scientists in which literature? That is so vague it could mean anything. Georgia Prudhomme has a PhD in genetics, so could technically be called a scientist. And she has written articles for Answers in Genesis, which could technically be called literature. So is this the sort of thing you're referring to? A quick search on Google Scholar for Australopithecus chimp returns plenty of peer-reviewed articles comparing various Australopithecine to chimps and demonstrating the various differences and similarities. There were a few that were comparing ancient fossils to modern apes, and were listing chimps and humans as examples of modern apes that they looked at. I didn't find a single one that said Australopithecus afarensis were just pygmy chimps. I did find one that compared Australopithecus to a pygmy chimp, but it doesn't even come close to suggesting that Australopithecine were pygmy chimps. It is suggesting that we should use pygmy chimps as the baseline for comparison with early hominids instead of the common chimp, because they are morphologically closer to Australopithecine than common chimps are. Far from calling them pygmy chimps, it highlights some key differences, such as the bipedal gait of the Australopithecine, and several differences in bone measurements. Because she was 100% ape. But how do they depict Lucy in the museums? This is the Museum of Natural History in London. Notice the footprints again. Lucy walking there with a child on her. Is Lucy more closely related to humans than other Australopithecines? Notice it's just an ape. Just an ape that happens to walk upright, which is something most apes don't do, especially not for extended periods of time, but which human apes do suggesting that humans are likely descended from Australopithecine. This question is still, what does it say there, today in the museum? Where the greatest paleontological uh, scientists in the world today reside? This question is what? Still unanswered. Okay, but do you remember the question? The question was if Lucy, the Australopithecus afarensis, is more closely related to humans than the other Australopithecine, like Africanus and Amensis, Barel Ghazali, Gari, and Sediba. So the question is to the order in which these species should be placed on the evolutionary tree, not whether or not they are our ancestors. Leave it to creationists to ignore something that they themselves present. Partly because each kind of Australopithecine has unique features that could link it with human beings. Of course, they were contemporaneous with human beings. Human beings were already there, so this is no evidence of evolution. Do you have evidence to back this up? Do you have a source for that? You can't just assert something like that and move on as if it's incontrovertibly true. You have to support the assertion, preferably with evidence. And no, the book of Genesis does not count as evidence. These were just apes. Did they walk upright? No evidence whatsoever except for the shaft of the distal femur being angled relative to the knee joint surfaces allowing for bipeds to balance while walking, a lip on the kneecap to keep it from dislocating during upright walking, knee joint surfaces that are larger than non-bipedal apes so that they can handle the added weight of using two limbs to walk instead of four, the entire pelvis being shaped to accommodate a bipedal gait, and the vertebrae show the spine would have been curved in a way that is necessitated by a permanent upright stance. See how I don't just say they walked upright and then leave it at that? I back up my assertion with evidence. That's how it's supposed to be done. Oh no, but they show them gathering sticks and making things and doing all of this from what? That skeleton? Well, that's one of the dozens of skeletons that we have. And no, just that skeleton wouldn't show evidence of them gathering sticks or using tools. But stone tools that may have been used for carving meat have been found and dated to the time of Australopithecus afarensis. So it is inferred from this that they may have used tools. 
But while pinpointing the earliest use of tools in apes would be significant, I don't think that there would be great surprise in the scientific community if it was later found that Afarensis did not use tools. In other words, that's just an artist's depiction of how we imagine they may have lived. It has no bearing on scientific consensus, and if scientific consensus later becomes that Afarensis did not use tools, they will probably have it redone to reflect that. That's what they've got. Now the head is 100% ape. Yes, because Lucy is an ape. Your head is also 100% ape, because you are also an ape. But for the sake of brevity, I am in the future of this video just going to refer to apes and humans, because correcting you every time you separate them will get tiresome in a hurry. So for the sake of the rest of this video, when I say human, I mean modern homo sapiens, and when I say ape, I mean the rest of the non-extinct great ape family. The arm to leg ratio that they say is midway between a human and an ape. Depends which ape you're comparing it with. For instance, here's an image showing the limb comparison between chimps, afarensis, and modern humans. As you can see, the chimps' hind legs are shorter than its arms, Lucy is almost the same, and human legs are longer than her arms. So Lucy isn't really midway, she's closer to the human side than the chimp side. You see, apes have a leg-to-arm ratio of about one to one. Which ape are you looking at that has a one-to-one -one ratio? As I pointed out, chimps actually have longer arms than they do legs, as do gorillas, orangutans, and bonobos. You need to look at the intermembral index for each species. If the index is above 100, the arms are longer than the legs. If it's between 80 and 100, the legs are longer, and it would generally mean that the animal uses mixed locomotion but will typically have an upright posture. Below 80 is an upright postured biped for sure. Orangutans have an in index of about 140, gorillas have an index of about 116, chimps and bonobos are around 106, humans are between 68 and 70, and afarensis is around 88, which would suggest that they were mostly bipedal but still relied on their arms for climbing. None of these are one-to-one, -one, though the chimps and bonobos aren't too far off. Admittedly, I only looked at the great apes, but since we're talking about afarensis, the great apes was the appropriate category to look for comparison. Um, I would really like to know where you're getting your information, though. That means the leg is as long as the arm. And humans have a leg-to-arm ratio of 1 to 0.75. So the arm is only three quarters as long as the leg. Well, intermembral index is the proper number to look at for this, um, which it, it looks at the bones rather than all the fleshy stuff that's on top of the bones and everything. But you're not far off. I mean, 1 to 0.75 would be an intermembral index of 75 if you were using the actual bones. Um, and since the actual number is 68 to 70, it's not that far off. I mean, you are wrong, but you're not very wrong this time. Now that is the average ratio. Now, Johansson worked this out and said the ratio here is 1 to 0.87. That's sort of halfway between apes and man. Not really. It's not that it's halfway, it's that it's closer to the human end of the spectrum. Remember, we're not looking to find out how we evolved from apes. We're tracing the lineages and looking for common ancestors. There are many more data points to go by, but just looking at the intermembral index, because Lucy is in the category that has longer hind limbs than forelimbs, that is one data point that we can use to determine that Afarensis is one of our ancestors, but is a more recent ancestor than the common ancestor we share with chimps. This is supported by the fact that Afarensis specimens date to about 3 million years ago, and the original divergence between the chimp and human lines is thought to have been around 13 million years ago. Hello? There are pieces missing there, pieces missing there, pieces missing there, pieces missing there, all over the place. How does he work that out? Well, perhaps with data collected from the dozens of other specimens of Afarensis. Also, you don't need a complete skeleton to be able to estimate the placement of the bones. Since apes are roughly symmetrical, you can use measurements from the left side and use it on the right side if you have to. The arms and legs are fairly complete in the Lucy specimen. The gaps that they left due to missing bones are fairly small. And any study determining the intermembral index would have listed a margin of error where they know that they have missing data and account for that when they come up with their numbers. How did you work that out? I might make a gif of that face. Oh wait, I already did that. And you would know if you followed me on Twitter. 
But he says that's not the only evidence, so let's forget it. You don't need to forget it if it's actually evidence, which it clearly is if you look at the actual scientific sources and don't just dismiss it after pulling a few loosey-goosey numbers out of your butt that are close to being correct but aren't quite there. By the way, Johansson is in prob has a trouble, has a big problem, especially with me. Have you seen my arm? It's very, very long. So I must be some intermediate hominid. Fun fact, stretching your arm out like that without providing any measurement data is scientifically useless. Fortunately, it's not that hard to measure something like that on a computer screen, so I put a screenshot of you stretching your arm out like that into GIMP, which, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's like a free Photoshop knockoff. Your suit is a bit baggy, so it's hard to get exact measurements, but from your shoulder to your wrist is about 191.5 pixels. I did not include the hand because you wouldn't when calculating intermembral indices. And uh, also to make the measurement comparable, you'd have to be standing on your tiptoes when I measure your legs to get to the end of the foot. From your hip down to your ankle was 275 pixels. Now when I get out my handy dandy calculator, I find that 191.5 divided by 275 yields a result of 0 0.696, which would translate to an intermembral index of roughly 69.6, .6, which is exactly where it should be for human beings. So no, you would not be an intermediate form based on intermembral index, you would be human. Some people just have long arms, I can't help it. But it's good to keep trouble at arm's length. Now, he also says, this hip over here uh, tells us that she walked upright. Unfortunately, not with that one, because with this one, she actually walked like an ape. Why is that? I'm not an expert in primate orthopedics, so I can't tell just from looking at it. I do know that people who do specialize in studying primate bones structures say that they can tell Lucy walked upright just by looking at the hip joint. So please explain why they are wrong. But he says, this hip must be twisted. And if we twist it a little bit, then she could walk upright. Not with this one, but if we twist it. Are you referring to the fact that some of the hip bones were crushed and went through the fossilization process in a way that made her pelvis look more chimp than biped? Uh, because when the damaged pieces were cut out and put back together in the way they would have been had they not been damaged, the pelvis shows that Lucy was bipedal. Hell, this process was caught on tape and put into a documentary about Lucy, so if this were some fraudulent attempt to force bipedalism on an ape that was not bipedal, they would definitely not have allowed a documentary crew to film it. Though to be fair, I'm pretty sure they filmed a reenactment of the original event, as he did it for a paper that he published in 1979, several years before the documentary was made. And Lovejoy, the author of the paper, included in the paper the process that he used for reconstructing the pelvis, so I'm not entirely sure what you're even claiming here. We could. And he says it must be a twisted hip. But of course there is no other hip to compare it with, can you see? So all we have is a hip that makes her walk like an ape. Now why does he say it's twisted? Well, because of the knee. The knee, you see, is more like a human knee. That's the only piece of the fossil that is like a human. Well, you're wrong there, but do continue. I think I know where this is going. But do they tell you in the textbooks that they never found the knee with Lucy? Almost there. That they found it in totally different deposits? That it doesn't even belong to this fossil? No. They just added it for convenience. Oh, so close. You got me edging. I was really hoping that you would give the numbers that creationists usually give for this. Now, this all stems from a misunderstanding in the Q&A section of a lecture that Johansson gave in 1986. One questioner asked how far away from Lucy did you find the knee, and Johansson took that to mean how far away from Lucy did they find the 1973 knee joint, which was a separate find from Lucy. All the bones in the specimen dubbed Lucy were found at a single location, but there was a knee joint found close by in 1973. This knee claim has been so thoroughly debunked that even Kent Hovind has agreed to stop using it. Now remember, man and apes were contemporaneous, yes or no? Man and modern apes? Yes. Man and Australopithecus afarensis? Definitely not. So, what's the big deal with finding a human knee? It was not a human knee. If it were a human knee, the sizing would have been completely off. We have bigger knees than the Australopithecine did, as we are bigger animals. In sum, if it were a human knee, it would have been known. 
Now, I'm not sure when this was recorded, but Lucy's knee was definitely not the only knee found that belongs to the Afarensis species. There are at least two others, so it's not like they just slapped a human knee on Lucy and called it a day. There are ways of telling human knees apart from the Australopithecine knees. Because in this area, we find humans and Australopithecines together. In Aldervai Gorge, you find evidence of human activity as well as these creatures. In the same strata? I sincerely doubt it, and I would need to see your source for that. And man and the apes are end products... Not end products, just current products. We're still evolving, after all. ...of an evolutionary process. This comes from textbooks, which shows you that here there is no evidence. What is it with creationists and the claim that a non-labeled spot on a diagram is an admission of a lack of evidence? Is every find that links humans to the other great apes supposed to be included on that small textbook diagram? Here's an example of what that diagram would look like. I know it looks like just a black box, but that's just because there was so much text to write in that it had to be overlaid to the point where it just became a black box. Is that a helpful diagram in any way? No? Then stop demanding that it be included in textbooks and museum displays. The only evidence we have is at that level and any creature that is buried with them in the past. So the only evidence you'll accept is evidence that is in the same strata as modern organisms? Did I get that right? Or are you claiming that modern apes are in the same strata as the ancient ones? Again, I would need to see your source for that. So all the fossils that we have, and this is very important that you realize this, all the fossils that exist occur together with man at the same time. Oh, for fuck's sake, give a source! I can't even find that claim on the AIG website, although I'm sure they won't disagree with it. You can't just assert something is true and expect me to swallow it without you backing up your assertion. A patasaurus could run at speeds of Mach 1.3. It's true, and it's very important. That claim holds the same scientific weight as your claim that Australopithecine and humans coexisted. Are you with me? Nope. You lost me when you started asserting things without any evidence to back it up. Nowhere do you find Australopithecus afarensis in the same strata as human or modern apes? Layers of the one and then the other and the other and the other. Damn. So now your claim is that the geologic column doesn't exist? That's based on inference, however reasonable, not the evidence of the fossil. So it's, it's based on a lot of things. I mean, there is no one geologic column that is perfectly preserved going back to the beginnings of the Earth anywhere. But we can tell by examining different characteristics of the layers where they fit in the column. Yes, one of those characteristics is which fossils you find in that layer, but that is definitely not the only one. It's just like giving you all the bones of the dogs and saying arrange them, so we find all these bones, including man, in the same layers, and we say, okay, scientist, put them out like they evolved. I'm just going to end it here. He doesn't really make any new claims after that. He just goes on about us being contemporary with the Australopithecine. Uh, so that's it for this week. Remember to follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon. See you next time. Hey.